All right, we are in lesson five. Our objective for today is I will be able to find the absolute value of real numbers, and I will be able to add real numbers using a number line and the adding number, excuse me, adding numbers chant. So I'll be able to find the absolute value, and I'll be able to add using the adding real numbers chant, which we will learn in just a minute. So first thing you need to know is what is the absolute value? Well, the absolute value is just the distance from zero on a number line. Okay, so let's look at a number line. Something like this right here. Draw you this number line on your paper. Remember, anything I write, you need to write. Okay? The absolute value of a number is just its distance from zero. Okay, so let's take a number like three. What is three's distance from zero in units? Well, it's one, two, three units from zero. What we notice about 3 and negative 3 is that they have the same absolute value because let's count from 0 to negative 3. We go 1, 2, 3 units. Okay, So the absolute value is always, always, always going to be positive. Absolute value is positive because distance is not negative. So 3 and negative 3, those have the same absolute value. 2 and negative 2, those have the same absolute value. They are 1, 2 units from 0 here and 1, two units from zero here, okay? So absolute value is always positive because distance can't be negative and absolute value is just the distance from zero. So here, what we see, I've got one minus three fourth. Well, what I notice is that both of these are inside this absolute value sign. This absolute value sign is a grouping symbol like we learned about in lesson four. So I've got to work inside this grouping symbol first. In order to subtract a fraction from a whole number, what I first need to do is rewrite that whole number as a fraction with four in the denominator. So four fourths minus three fourths, absolute value of that. Well, what is four fourths minus three fourths? Well, that's one fourth. And the absolute value of one fourth is just one fourth because one fourth is one fourth units from zero, okay? Absolute value is always positive, never negative. However, if we look here, we see that we've got a negative on the outside of the absolute value bracket. So what I wanna do is work inside my absolute value bracket and leave the negative on the outside. So that's negative. 11 minus 2 gives me 9. So now I've got to take the absolute value of 9, which gives me 9. But what I notice is that I still have a negative on the outside. So my answer here is negative 9. It's not negative because the absolute value of 9 is negative. It's negative because I took the absolute value of 9 and I got a 9. And then I saw, oh, I've got a negative out in front, so I added that negative out there. So the absolute value is not negative, but the negative was out front. Now, what we're going to be working on today is doing something like this. How do I get from negative, fi negative 5 to a, po to a positive 3? Excuse me, I said that wrong. If I start at negative 5 and I add 3, what does that give me? Well, what we know about a number line is that the positive numbers or the larger numbers are on the right. Okay, The smaller numbers or the negative numbers are on the left. Okay, So if I started at negative 5, which is right here, and then I added 3, I'm going to go to the right 3, because adding 3 or becoming positive 3, or excuse me, moving a positive 3 spaces is going to move me to the right. So I start at negative 5, and I move 3 spaces to the right because it's adding. So 1, 2, 3. That ends me at a negative 2. So what I know is that negative 5 plus 3 gives me negative 2. Okay? So that's the conceptual piece. That's how you can do it if you've got a problem like this where you've got smaller numbers, like negative 5 and a positive 3. What you can do is you can draw out a number line, and you can model it. Okay, I start at negative 5, and then I add 3, so I know that it's becoming more positive, so I can go to the right 3, because your positive numbers are again, on the right of your number line. So I'm moving to the right 3, okay? But that's not always going to work with numbers like this, because if you've got something like this, negative 18,543 plus... 12,547. You're not going to draw a number line for that. You need a quick, simple way to do it. Well, here it is. This is the number chant when you are adding positive and negative numbers. This is when you are adding, okay? The way this goes, and I'm going to have you do this in class, but the way it goes is same signs, add and keep, different signs of track. Take the sign of the higher number, then you'll be exact. So that's, that's what's going to help you do it. So let's practice that, all right? Same signs, add and keep, different signs of track. Let's look. Are the signs the same or are they different? Well, they're different. This is negative. This is a positive. So same signs add and keep different signs subtract. So let's subtract these. 21 minus 12, which gives me a 9. Okay? Take the sign of the higher number. What's higher? 
21 or 12? Which one of those numbers is bigger? 21 is bigger, so I take the sign of the higher number, I take the sign of the 21, it's a positive, so I leave it positive. Same thing here. Same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Are the signs the same or are they different? Well, they're both negative, so the signs are the same. So I add 19 plus 8 gives me 27. Okay? Same signs add and keep. I keep the sign as negative because both of them are negative. So same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Let's do the same thing here. Okay, same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Are these signs the same or are they different? Well, this is a positive 3 and 2 tenths. That's a negative 5 and 1 tenth, so I know I've got to subtract. 5 and 1 tenths minus 3 and 2 tenths. I borrow here. That gives me 5 and 1 tenth minus 3 and 2 tenths. Gives me 1 and 9 tenths. Okay? So I've got a 1 and 9 tenths. Same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Take the sign of the higher number. Which one of these is higher? 5 and 1 tenths or 3 and 2 tenths? Well, 5 is higher than 3, so I know that 5 is higher. Take the sign of the higher number, then you'll be exact. So we took the sign of the 5. So every time we're using that same thing. Same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Take the sign of the higher number, then you'll be exact. So let's do the same thing here. Same signs add and keep. Are my signs the same or are they different? Well, this is negative and this is negative, so the signs are the same. So let's add. 3 fifths plus 1 fifths gives me 4 fifths, okay? And then same signs add and keep. So I keep this sign just like it is. These are both negative, so I keep the sign as negative, all right? Same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Take the sign of the higher number, then you'll be exact. Last thing we're talking about here is closure. Remember, for something to be closed, it means that every time you perform that operation, you get the set of numbers that you started out with. So, the set of integers is closed under addition. This question is asking us to determine whether each statement is true or false. Okay? Are the set of integers closed under addition? Yes, they are. This statement is true because the sum of any two integers will always be an integer. I can choose any integer, negative 5, negative 50, negative 10. If I add that to any other integer, negative 12, negative 14, negative 30, any integer, if I add two integers, I'm always going to get an integer. Same thing with real numbers, okay? Is it true that the set of real numbers is closed under addition? Yes, that statement is true because the sum of any two real numbers, you can pick any real number, rational or irrational, come on, rational or irrational, if you add any two real numbers, you're always going to get a real number. So this statement is true because the sum of any two real numbers will always be a real number. That is it for lesson five.